Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. All right, you're listening to Mornings with Lone Star here on Lone Star Community Radio, irlonestar.com worldwide, and Conrad's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you're hearing my voice, that means we have a special guest in the studio which also means we're on YouTube and Facebook Live. So check out Lone Star Community Radio right now, and uh, you can watch us, or you can just continue listening in the car, whatever. But uh, today's special guest came through Audience of One, which everyone kind of knows I do that show on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock with my buddy Andrew. So Andrew told me he has this great musician coming into town, and Monty Montgomery will be performing at the Mucky, is that Mucky Duck? I think that's how, or McGonagall's. No, it's not McGonagall. McGonagall's I'm, Monkey McGonagall, Duck. McGonagall's yes. Monkey Duck. I, it's funny. I've been there like ten times. <laughs> Never, I just call it the, like the Monkey Duck. But it's in Houston. Uh, we put links to Monty and also where to purchase tickets. He's performing tonight, I believe, and doors open at seven o'clock. So, uh, Andrew, you I, you're the one that brought this guest, so you know who <laughs> oh, this I is. I get credit for it, huh? Well, no, I uh, I I like these kind of situations because everyone when you when I started the radio station, everyone assumes I know every single music artist. All the years, and especially the local stuff, mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm basically I can, ha- I guess I can bring people to the next level. And they're like, you got to have this kid on. I'm like, I don't. Okay, cool, whatever. But, uh, but I, you were really excited about this. I am, yes. And I'm not gonna lie, uh, I did a whole about four hour trip yesterday, going through Monty's music, and Monty's been playing the guitar, been like been playing for a, enough time to I noticed immediately how good he was. <laughs> Because it's like, oh, this guy plays a lot. Because you can see how, like everything he's doing is on point. And so uh, it, I'm going to put links to Spotify or wherever we can find Monty's music from basically his website. Because I love this style of music. And it's all his genre is all over the place. So, Monty, are you there? He's on Zoom with us. Hey, hey, guys. Yeah. And, um, yes, sir. Yeah. But I do have to say something. And Andrew is a huge fan of yours. He, he told me some great story about seeing you, I don't know, at Texas State or somewhere yeah, around well, Texas State. Maybe we'll get to that here in a minute. And well, what <laughs> I love is I went through the very beginning. YouTube has all these clips. And it's so cool to see your, your I guess, your timeline, Monty. And it's like, and, and you can still play it just as good. And I love that because I was like, well, well, what's the good side? I mean, texted Andrew. I was like, you need to tell me what album I need to start with. All of them. Because <laughs> everything I'm finding is like all over the place. And I was like, I need to have like a base here. So, uh, but I, I, wa- I want to say as a first time listener, I was, I love this kind of music. I love the guitar. I love guitar picking. And that's something I had to ask you is when you first started playing the guitar, were you at, like, I, I imagine you being like 14, 15 and you're trying to hang out with the neighborhood kids, and you clear, you clearly know you're talented, and all these scrubs aren't. And you're kind of like, I need to find a band that's good. And then you're like, no, screw it. I'm just going to do my own thing. And Or have you always just been doing your own thing? Yeah, you're, you're, you were right about the age. I, I started around, around the age of 13, 14. But uh, as far as like the neighborhood stuff, no. My, my mom was a, good, was a musician. Oh, okay. Right? So, I just picked it up from her and she had all these musician friends. So I just, I just got into that circle and that that's where it all started. Well, Monty, you play the acoustic guitar like it's electric and I've never heard anybody play the acoustic guitar quite like you do. Was it the acoustic you picked up first or was it the, uh, was it an electric guitar? And at what point did you say, I can, I can really play this acoustic like an electric. Cause it's not, it's not easy to do. Let's be honest. Um, you know, First of all, yeah, I started on acoustic. My okay. mom had two acoustics, so I, I grabbed one of those. And then uh, and then over time, you know, I, I switched to electric for a while, and I was kind of a higher gun in some bands, you know, playing electric lead and stuff. But as far as when I made the acoustic into what it is or what it became for me, uh, that was just a result of playing shows with with my electric initially. Mm-hmm. And then I, I would start out every set with, my, with the acoustic. I'd pick up the acoustic and... Uh, uh, but I was running the acoustic through the same stuff as my electric, the same pedals and amps and stuff. So mm-hmm. just it, I just started spending more and more time at the beginning of sets on, on the acoustic guitar. I just felt really comfortable on it. So uh, so I just I ditched the amps, you know, initially and just just went full acoustic. And and that's that's just how it started. Wow. Right there. 
Well, the, the soundtrack of my college is arguably first in repair, to be honest with you. Uh, in fact, the uh, song Girl Like You is in my wedding video. So yeah. uh, it's one of my, one of my all-time favorites, uh, definitely. But uh, when you have such a unique style like you do, do you have any like influences or, or musical people that you look up to or they were kind of the people influenced or is it all your own? No, I'm kidding. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, who might it be? Because you are so unique, like I said. It's And if you've never heard Monty Montgomery's uh, guitar playing style or any of his music, I highly suggest that you do so. Don't worry. I said I'd put a link to it. <laughs> but who were some of your musical influences? I'm curious. Well, you know, um, starting out initially, I was a big Fleetwood Mac freak. Oh, yeah. They were kind of like my Beatles, you know? And so Lindsey Buckingham was, was fascinating to me because he didn't use a pick at all. So... People like him and, uh, you know, Mark Knopfler, another, another guy, Dire Straits, they didn't use a pick. I just really marveled at, you know, kind of like pop rock guys that aren't using a pick. They're just doing this finger style thing. So I got into that early on. And then people like Michael Hedges and, you know, Stevie Ray and Steve Vai. And then they just all started pouring in. But I mean, initially... Lindsey Buckingham would have been the first guy. See, the, the difference between guys like you and, and, and me is I admire them, too. I just can't translate that into playing the guitar. <laughs> but you obviously said, well, let me try that. I, I, they seem to be able to do it. Let me see if I can do it, too. Because, uh, again, like I said, your style is, is very unique. And the, the song that I think originally captured me was the, uh, the, the When Will I um, song. And I think there's, a, there's a, a, a video out there from, I think it was the Austin City Limits, uh, in 1998, and I have to admit, it's really funny. They show shots of the crowd, and it looks like it's 1972. It's the weirdest thing. I'm like, it's only 98. I remember this. Uh, but that video is iconic. That song is unbelievable. I've seen you play it live a couple of times. And in fact, the drummer and the bassist at the time literally stood up and walked off stage. And then you just play and solo for probably, I don't know, seven, eight minutes. It's amazing. Yeah. How did that song come to you? Um... Well, you know, I'd, I'd written that song back in, um, gosh, like back in the late 80s. And I made a demo of it once. And then I recorded it also on my first album, which I didn't really release that. There was just a few, not many copies of it. But none of them sounded like the one that, that you heard with all the, that was before my acoustic kind of, you know, thing. So, uh, but I wrote it initially just because I, I don't remember how I, got the phrase in my head when will I look back and laugh but I don't know if I thought that or heard it um and I just like that I just like I thought that was a cool idea for a song and um you know I, I, I'm a big reggae fan love the police you know they're yeah. all reggae pop influence yeah that kind of stuff so so yeah that's that's how it started right there and then just do you still play that song Oh, yeah. Okay. I no, figured. he doesn't. Well, yeah, sometimes songs, they come, you play them for a little yeah. while, and well, then you drop off. So, you know, for those who are, are fans, are they going to be able to hear that song tonight? And it sounds like it's possible. Okay. okay. Excellent. And, yeah. I don't think Monty will say to no to a couple hundred dollars to be like, yeah, I'll play that song a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, uh, purposely leave it off and then and then make people beg for it. There well, you go. Uh, what I, like I said earlier, I went through the rabbit hole of looking you up, especially on YouTube, and I noticed something is you seem to be playing with the same guitar over the years. Yeah. And I had to ask, is, it, is this like a trigger thing from Willie Nelson uh, kind of thing? Or like kind of you, is. you yeah, have the are. same guitar? Yeah. Um, the thing with that is, you know, that guitar, I really beat up so much when I first got it. You know, I, I didn't take very good care of it. and uh, It's an know, Alvarez, from, correct? 87 Alvarez? Yeah, it's an 80, 88, actually. 88, okay. But, you know, just keeping it in my car on winter nights, checking it on the airplanes, <laughs> you know, playing by campfires when it's 30 degrees out and, you know, just stuff like that. It, what you really don't want to do with your guitar. But for some reason, that guitar took all of those things that I did to it and it just, it just absorbed it all and made it this really special guitar that I can't get any other guitar I own to do what that one does. I can't reproduce that one. So, I've just that, so that's why I'm, I'm yeah. stuck with it. Yeah, I, it was just funny because, especially when like the the way technology works, so I, I I don't think you ever would have thought of that like happening. Like some kid could just look you up on YouTube and find all these years of you playing music, and uh, I was like, I just kept noticing that guitar. I was like, this guy keeps using the same guitar. Like that is I, know, I, since, since that all happened, you know, guitar companies are now doing this whole aging process where they they're, they're trying to to do the same thing you know where they'll get a guitar 
to break in by by this process of aging it, you know, so that's a real popular thing now. So that'd be an interesting gig to get. I'm the guy who ages guitars. They hand new guitars to me, and I just thrash on them for a couple yeah. hours and be like, "Here just you go." Get, just good. give them to Southwest Airlines, and they'll do a lot of damage to it. I swear that um, one time I saw you, there was a hole in that guitar. I I swear from where I was standing or sitting, it looked like there was a hole. Was that was that the case? And it's been repaired, or has it never been a hole in outside it's of the one that's supposed to be there? Uh, there was never been an actual okay. hole in it. Okay, it looked like it looked like maybe there was a man. This guy's played it so much, he's worn a hole through it. Well, that's one thing I I think people should think about when they come see your show tonight. I really love seeing musicians live because you see their process, and like I remember seeing Jackson Brown uh, solo, and he had like fifteen guitars behind him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, I was like, I know this guy's a roadie. Like this guy just tours all the time. I was like, but how does he turn around and know? Like he has a huge catalog, and he's like, all right, that guitar from third to the right, I need that one. I'm going to play that. I have like two songs I can play on that. Cause I guess he does that to speed up the concert. So you don't have to tune it every time. But, right. uh, well, yeah. but I also like, I prefer a guitarist or a musician like you do and what you do. Cause you can actually, you're, you're part of the, that unique show. Cause you're tuning and you're kind of like going in your head going like, all right, let's, let's play this one. Let's check this one out. And, uh, so when I saw Jackson Brown with the 15 guitars, like, Oh, this guy's just, he doesn't care. He's just playing every day. He doesn't, he just wants to get out of here. And, uh, <laughs> But not well, Monty. Not Monty. He wants to have a good show. You know, it's funny when I think back when I used to uh, tour Europe a lot, I would. that's the only guitar I would take with me. And I, when I think about doing that now, I'm like, I, I don't think I would do that. I would, I would take... <laughs> I would take a backup, but you know that's just how that's just how it was. You know, let's just let's take that one guitar, and if something goes wrong, we'll fix it. Well, that's so. true. That's when we'll truly know if Monty's a diva is that he can't find his guitar, and he's like, "Nope, I am not playing with any other guitar. Someone's got to find this one." And yeah. uh, that that would be hilarious if that was the case. People, <laughs> it's like, why is he on the stage? Oh, he can't find his guitar. Uh, but you know, let's talk about the the concert tonight. What do you? What kind of shows are you putting on today? Is it a full band? Is it just you? And it's just cause... just going to be me tonight. I, I do band stuff too, but but at the Monkey Duck, it just seems like more of kind of a holistic yeah. environment, you know. I've done both in there, but I, I kind of prefer this the solo thing in, in that particular room. And I, this is uh, again reflecting on the the hours I spent finding you on YouTube. I have a feeling that you're one of those artists that other artists really respect. Is that something that am I getting a, a good feeling on that? Because I, I know musicians all hang out all the time, and they kind of hear of each other, and they're like, "Hey, you got to hear this guy." Because when I started noticing you play the guitar, I was like, "Oh, this guy's a guitarist first. Like he knows how to play the guitar." And so, have you have any encounters with people going like, "You had no idea they even knew who you were," and like, "Oh, you're a, you're a great musician." Well, yeah, I mean, I like you know, I've I've met famous people that I look up to, like you know, really kind of more, uh, you know more established famous musicians and um when i introduce myself you know sometimes they're like oh i know who you are i'm like oh that's not bad yeah Yeah, (laughs) yeah that's great a lot of people Um, may may not know this but you actually wrote the uh song for the abc sitcom last man standing is this correct yeah, not only that, but I did all of the music for that show. All of it, yeah. And that's, what's funny is if you're not aware of that and you hear the music from that show, it's unmistakably Monty Montgomery. I mean, it's it's unmistakable. What's you? How did that come about, out of curiosity? But, I was, when I performed on Austin City Limits, um, uh, Tim Allen happened to be watching that show. But, uh, he tracked me the, down. The actor, Tim, Tim Allen? Yes. Okay, all right. When he was getting ready to do well, but this is way this is a year before he did the, the show. So he just tracked me down through my label at that time, and and uh, when I was touring a lot, uh, I I came through. Uh, I think it was Michigan where he happened to be, and so he we came, he came out and we met, and we just became friends after that. So um, then we when he had this project come up for Last Man Standing, he just called me and asked me if I would consider doing the music, which I'd never done anything like that. Mm-hmm. He said, "Well, just." just do the pilot, you know, do the theme song in the, in the first episode and just see if it's something you want to do. So I did that and loved it. And, you know, the people that, that heard it liked it. So uh, the people that made the decisions. So, yeah, that, that was a longstanding gig for nearly a decade. For Wait, me, so. so if I'm understanding this correctly, you, you go into a room and you watch the episode and you write music to go with the episode? Yeah. Oh, wow. It, it really... Um, they're just they're just like little, uh, you know, three to five second little. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like in between, yeah, in between shots or scenes or yeah. anything right. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and going to convert even at a commercial and kind of you know in, in between shots and stuff like that. Yeah, 
Right? Wow, that, that's really cool. Well, it makes me think of, you ever seen that movie, uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall? Uh, yeah, a long time ago. But where the main it. character's job is to write music for like a CSI type show, and he's like the piano player, and he hates his job. He's like, I gotta make this stupid music for the stupid show, and it's like a, a CSI kind of show. <laughs> remember that exactly but, but yeah, yeah he's no he's like in the room and he's like oh no the murderer is getting away no 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 and he's like like hey can you bring it up a little bit it's like this guy's dead how am i supposed to make it exciting but well I, all, I, all of my stuff was was designed to be you know kind of uplifting yeah that's it, what it, oh, i used to say man can i get some kind of dramatic scene of, you know, at some point just give me some so i can do something different you know but yeah, I became really good at doing uh, really happy jingling things for three to five seconds. I was going to say, is the writing a little different than normal? Because it is specifically for a sitcom. You kind of got to think upbeat and happy. And that's not always the case, I suppose, with some of your music. So was it a little bit different thought process? That was the, uh, that was the instructions that I had from <laughs> you know, the music director there. He said, yeah, Excellent. just make up. Everything's peppy. You know, you're trying to kind of just... You know, take that joke. You know, the end of a joke usually takes us out, or whatever, whatever that feeling is, whatever that mood is, take it out to commercial or come in. So, the cool, the coolest thing about the gig is they literally just let me do whatever I wanted to do. They wanted, you know, they wanted me to do what I do. I use, I use my my main guitar, you know, and and just did. I just thought of things off the top of my head that would go with the scene, and I would send them a bunch of stuff, and they would pick pick and choose what they liked. So it was really fun. I, I, you know, I really, it was a dream gig. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. Well, especially, I always feel like those kind of gigs, gigs are unsung, like meaning like no one really knows that like, <laughs> you did that. And when, so it's kind of a cool conversation piece to have with people. Yeah. It's like, you ever seen The uh, Last Man Standing? I did the music for that. Like that's such yeah. a, a flex that no one really would expect. Maybe, maybe he'll play it tonight. Well, now it's people all AI, play. right? AI writes everything. <laughs> Five second uh, interstitials. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Well, Monty, I can't have that, you that, on. That would be hilarious if you came up to the monkey duck and you open up and you just play the little riff. Five second, and, then, and then you're done? And then you're like, there you go. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, that would be great. Well, Monty, I can't have you on and not at least tell you my Monty Montgomery story, and I'll try and keep it brief. I think it was probably 2001 or 2002. Um, I was living in San Marcos and, uh, my daily routine was to drive past Cheatham street warehouse and, uh, up on the sign, it said tonight, Monty Montgomery. And I'm like, wait a minute. Um, I, I pass by this all the time and I, I, I didn't see that up there till just now. This is crazy. So I contact my buddy Dustin and I said, we're going to go see Monty tonight. This is awesome. We get there early and we're walking up the stairs. I don't know if you remember, you kind of walk up the stairs and go to the right. And there's someone standing kind of like this, you know, arms hanging over the uh, railing. We walk up and we notice it's you. And I said to my buddy Dustin, I said, that's that money. It's money. And you turned around and you said, Hey man, you said, go ahead and go on in. I'm like, wow, what, what's going on? We didn't know you were going to have a show tonight. And you said, well, apparently there was Austin city of limits was going on at the time and everything was booked, like just booked solid. You can't get in. And, and you were like, well, Cheatham street had an opening. And so I just came out here and it's really, I, you go, I don't even know if anybody's going to show up because this was so last minute. And we get in, we get front row seats, basically. And within 30 minutes of you playing, the place is packed. Word of mouth got out, packed. It was wonderful. You put on a great show. I'll never forget this, though. Uh, you started taking requests, I guess, because it was kind of an impromptu. And I started yelling out, um, oh, what was the song I was going to say? Uh, da, 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 sir, um, I don't know. I was, I was yelling out a certain song. I was going, oh, I know you by heart. I kept saying, I know you by heart, I know you by heart. And you ignored me, playing another song. I know you by heart. And finally, after about the third time, you said, dude, I'm not going to play that song. <laughs> and I was like, okay, duly noted. And everybody kind of got a chuckle. So I just thought that was pretty funny, man. <laughs> Sounds like something I would have done. <laughs> you were not in the mood to play the song. Let's, let's put it that way. <laughs> well, I apologize. How rude of me. <laughs> no, no, of course not. That, but that is my Monty Montgomery story. So do you no, remember? Uh, by the way, do you even remember that no, show? No, I bet you did. Probably not necessarily remember that but it's you know i really do try i i inject a lot of humor in in between songs because that's just who i am and that's how i'm comfortable on stage it's kind of hard for me to you know after a song stand up there and be super serious and talk about my life and my you yeah know, it you is know I mean? it is an emotional song no doubt but for me i just grew up in a really kind of humorous family and so i i joke around a lot with the audience you know so I'm sure when I said that, it wasn't designed to be rude. It was just well, designed. Well, he told me he cried. Oh, gosh, stop. <laughs> Andrew's like, this is the worst I've, day of I've my never, life. I've never been the same since, yeah. but um, obviously I remember it, so. <laughs> he told me to shut it. 
Uh, so, so my, where are you living these days? Are you here uh, in Texas still? Yeah, I'm up in Dallas. Oh, excellent. Okay, that's great, man. Great, great, great. Yeah, I'll, I do want to give people an idea. You are you're touring around for the next, I would say, for February. Uh, you're going to be in San Antonio at Sam's Burger Joint. I've been there. Uh, you're going to be in Win- uh, Winsboro, Texas, uh, at the Center for the Arts. That's going to be a cool venue. And then, uh, then you're back in like Lukenbach and then El Dorado in Arkansas. So you're pretty much you're you're moving around. I encourage people to check out the website Mont- montymontgomery.com to see if he's playing around at your neck of the woods. Would you tell folks to listen to you on Spotify? Is that where you want them to go, or is that like where do you want people to listen to you, where you get the most money? On our website. The website. Okay. Um, obviously, I'm on I'm on a lot of streaming platforms too. So you know. Yeah, I always not, that well, that whole world is so wild to me. Like how not, like anyone can get their music on it now. So it's like you're I don't need to tell anybody, they'll figure it out. It's, <laughs> it's, it's everywhere. <laughs> That's great. And the but you know, actually let me ask you this. Through all the years you've been performing, have you noticed a new a, like a younger crowd getting involved with your music at all? Or well, I mean, yeah, but but for the most part, my fans are kind of grow, you know, aging with me. A lot of the times, I mean, I'm always trying to reach, you know, different, uh, different age groups, but, um, to be honest, uh, depending on, I mean, if, if I play like a, a date in Texas, you know, up here, I, I, like I said, I see a lot of the same faces that I saw 20 years ago. Yeah. That's, that's why I go out on the road and, and do, you know, do, uh, shows in front of a uh, new audiences to get, you know, new, new fan support. Well, that's one thing that I don't know if it's the streaming platforms that kind of did, but I've noticed a lot of genres of music, especially like the country genre. It's like it's not country anymore. Anyone could be on it. And you have Post Malone doing all these crossover stuff. And it's like, I guess there's music's all just kind of mushing together. Yeah, and, it really is. And like they're, they're, the, the crowds aren't sect off, sectioned off. Like everyone kind of cross crowds now. And uh, there's now the, I guess, festivals are the big thing now. Do you, nope. do you perform a lot of the festivals? I try. Try? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, you know, it's funny. I, well, they, we have a big festival coming here, uh, Biggest Texas. And mm-hmm. it's probably going to be the first time there's a huge festival here in Conroe and Montgomery County. And I was like, are they going to be able to pull this off? Because they got like Billy Strings and Dwight Yoakam and all them. And I was like, that's going to be really weird to have Dwight Yoakam in Conroe. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. But Houston's always, you know, a 45 minute drive away. So, sure. What's your favorite venue? Like anywhere? Or? Anywhere, yeah. Jeez, that's that's too broad of a question. Oh, okay. Well, what's your um, favorite one hundred person venue? There you go. Detailed standing room only. You know, the Saxon Pub is where it all started for me in Austin. Yeah. You know? That's just that's still uh like the best listening room, you know, anywhere really. And especially yeah. at the this the stage of your career, do you get to choose where you play? Well, I certainly have some say in it. I can turn them down or yeah. Them- well, because I, I imagine like because I don't I'm not, I'm not anywhere close to being a musician, but I imagine you, when you have a good experience at a place, and you're like, hey, next year let's make sure we go to Saxon's Pub. Like I really want to go there because yeah. that was a great you, time. Yeah, you always return to the places where not only did you have a good time, but you know the venue treated you well. Yeah, free drinks, right? Got a burger. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> You know, if you if you get, I mean, it certainly happened. You get you play a venue where you know you know you're there for the first time and you have a, a, a bad experience with, with the staff or or the owner or whatever. You know, it's it, it's it's bound to happen as much as you play, but it's just you know cross that one off the list and move on. <laughs> right. So, Mike, for for someone whose career has spanned uh, as long a time period as as yours, how do you think your music? I guess two part question. How do you keep the creativity going? But how do you feel like your music has changed over the past, say, twenty years? Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just constantly being creative. I'm, I write all the time, uh, just because I really enjoy that. I really enjoy the process of writing music. And as you can tell, you said earlier on, in, you know, during this interview that, uh, you know, I'm, the versatility of my music is, is pretty, you know, it's, it's pretty broad. So, um, you know, I just, I like all, all kinds of different flavors of music. So I'm, you know, I always like to dabble in in different you know different things that i haven't written so far you know like odd time signatures and reggae and some folky country and blues and slide you know i I just i just kind of like doing everything so i just keep creative well i got i this is off off the 
path question. Uh, if you didn't know, the new Roadhouse remake's coming out. Oh. And Jake Gyllenhaal's in it, whatever. I'm not, but the old one, one thing I loved about the old one was Jeff Healy was uh-huh. the, the band in it. But what I love about the movie is he plays behind Chicken Wire. Yeah. And I'm like, were places really like that? Were that rough where they had to put Chicken Wire in front of the band? Where people were throwing beer balls at them and stuff. Have you ever played in a place like that? I played strange gigs, but never, never behind chicken wire. I can honestly well, say. Do, does anyone remember? Do you remember? Do you, do you remember that, Andrew? Do you remember that movie? Yeah, I see. Yes, I've seen and it. I just remember I, going like, "There's a place where I, you, they have chicken wire in front of the band." Like, I want to go to that place. Yeah, it sounds like a good time. I don't know but, how good the music would be though. Well, I mean, that's what that's why I love the idea of the musicians. Kind of like you're focusing on getting ready to play, and then it's like, oh yeah, this place is on the outskirts of Lubbock, and yeah. it's Lubbock to Dry County, so everyone's coming here is just getting wasted. Well, it, it's probably for the musicians' protection. I mean, I was saw a show up in Dallas. Well, yeah, of course it's for the. Yeah, no, I, but here, well, hear me out. Obviously, right. I saw a show up in Dallas years ago. I saw the Toadies um, right after the St. Patrick's Day parade. So I'm sure you're familiar with that scene, uh, Monty. It's just crazy and people day drinking and everything. And by the time a six o'clock show comes around for Toadies, um, people are throwing beer bottles like around the, you know, uh, through the crowd. And we, I, me and my, my friend, we moved off to the side uh, to, to avoid any of that. So I imagine they put some of that stuff up there for uh, the protection of the musician. So Baden Todd, Todd Lewis, I think, well, I probably just, would just, not want to get hit in the head with a full Miller Lite. I, I just imagine Monty going to a place he's never played, and then he's like, oh, this place has got chicken wire. Uh oh. <laughs> what are we? I was doing the uh, Fourth of July picnic, uh, Willie Nelson's thing, and, and Luke and Bach one year, and uh, I remember I was side stage, and Robert O'Keen came out and he was playing, and and yeah, they were just chucking full beers. I just uh, you know, but and it wasn't like in a, in a violent way, like we don't like what's happening here. It was more like. Yeah, man, this is awesome. <laughs> right. There goes twelve dollars. Right, it's for the same principle, you don't shoot guns up in the air at New Year's. You know, <laughs> you probably shouldn't be throwing full bottle oh. of beer, and you know I they got to come down and hit somebody. So, anyways, that's great. Now, uh, are you working on anything new right now, or what's going on? Always, I'm always working on yeah. new stuff. Is this something yeah. you you feel like you're going to continue doing this until as long as you can, until you can't, till your hands won't work anymore, huh? Absolutely, it's well, really the only thing I've ever done. <laughs> right, I, you wouldn't know how to do anything else, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that, I'm, I'm skilled at this, and I don't even know what else. So maybe. Not well, yeah, it's obvious that you are. That's one thing I love about, it. like, like again, that first video I saw. I don't know what performance it was. Like, oh, this guy plays guitar. <laughs> he, he's not up there just kind of strumming, doing the two chords, and he's he wrote a couple songs. Like, no, this guy knows how to play guitar. So awesome. Well, Monty, we appreciate you joining us, man. Uh, I mean, like Dick said at the beginning of the interview, we put all the links down to the uh, McGonagall's Mucky Duck and your, your tour and your website and everything else. Is there anything else you want to plug before we uh, let you go? No, man. I'm just looking forward to, to playing in Houston. I'm practicing on my ukulele. Oh, know? nice. Excellent. I, ukulele. Still, I still think you should go up there and play at least 10 <laughs> minutes of the Last Man Standing music. and Just, oh, comp- <laughs> just in five-minute segments, little in- yeah. increments. Is it possible for anybody to look cool with a ukulele? I think so. I think you just pulled it off. I think so. <laughs> I guess. But uh, again, folks, if you're uh, tuning in now, Monty Montgomery is going to be playing at the Mucky Duck. And he's not a giant. If you look at the screen right now, that's a ukulele. <laughs> that's a ukulele, yeah. yeah. He's not a giant. But he's playing uh, tonight at Doors, I believe, open at 7 o'clock. Tickets are available. I put a link to the tickets. And again, he's playing uh, in February all around Texas. So if you live in Texas and you like traveling, you're playing at some really cool places. And uh, his music's all the links there, all that cool stuff. Monty, thank you so much. I'm glad I got to be introduced to your music through Andrew. You're welcome. And taking your time. If you're ever around uh, the Montgomery County, Harris County area, just hit us up and we, I can buy you a drink or, you know, whatever. But uh, again, thank you so much, Monty. I'll try to stop by in next time live. Sorry, That'd be great. We'd appreciate it. That'd be great. Guys, you've been listening to Mornings of Lone Star on Lone Star Community Radio. We're going to get back to the music. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later. <laughs>